Joining the show now, uh, a television legend. I don't know how else to put it. We're talking about All in the Family, the Jeffersons, Good Times, and Maud. Norman Lear joins the show. Hi, Norman. Hi, guys. It, it, it's an absolute pleasure to have you. Uh, you you're on to talk about this uh, documentary, Just Another Version of You, which premieres on uh, PBS October 25th. Tell us about it. Well, let's see. That, that's been my bumper sticker for a number of years. My bumper sticker reads, Just Another Version of You. Yeah. And when Heidi Ewing and Rachel Grady, the producers and directors of uh, of the documentary, uh, when they came along and wanted to do it and saw my bumper sticker, they thought that would be a great title. So uh, the title of it is just is Norman Lear colon just another version of you, and that's the way I I, I view us all so as uh, human beings. Our common humanity makes us versions of one another. I'm surprised you hear you ha hear you that you have a bumper sticker. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a moment. That's it. Do you understand that you do you understand that you are responsible for some of the most incredible television shows in television history? Well, what we were doing at the time was, uh, I mean, it's we. I, I had a growing family. It was early on in my uh, in my family life, and I was fighting hard to make a buck to support a growing family. That's what we were all doing. Uh, the fact that we chose to deal with real problems as opposed to, you know, preceding uh, All in the Family and these shows, uh, the, 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 the biggest problem a family faced in an, in, a, in an American television show was that the boss was coming to dinner and the roast was ruined. Uh, we were dealing, we decided to deal with the problems we were really facing. So we made nothing up. It was all just uh, the common, uh, you know, up the street and down the street, across the street from when other families were dealing with all the problems we were writing about. Now, the, the problems that you were writing about those years, all those years ago, with All in the Family, they're happening all over again. Don't you feel like right now we need an All in the Family? We need a television show, something that can really carefully navigate these waters and let America laugh at itself again. No, I couldn't agree with you more. I couldn't. And, and if uh, all goes well, maybe we'll have a hand in doing that. How did you, how did the network react when you pitched them on All in the Family? Well, uh, let me put it this way. The first uh, pilot that I made that uh, was paid for by ABC. And uh, they had it for a year. They caused me to make it again because that was in their deal. It was it was the same script with the same two stars, Carol O'Connor and Gene Stapleton, because the minute, you know, they read those roles, each of them owned them. And uh, so I made it twice for ABC in 1968. And then three years went by before somebody new, a new president, and the person of Bob Wood appeared at CBS. He looked at it and said, this goes on the air. Wow. But we still fought over, uh, you know, what Archie could say, would say, right. and this subject and that subject and so forth. Norman Lear joining the show, le legendary writer and producer for television. Uh, Good Times was amazing. I, I grew up watching Good Times, and, you know, as a kid, I didn't know it was the first time we had been introduced to a family of color uh, talking about the things that they were talking about. In hindsight, there had never been anything like it on TV before. What made you want to do that? Well, it, I think it might have started with, I mean, it's a good idea, and it's hard to think that I couldn't have thought of that or didn't think about it. But in specifics, uh, on uh, on Maud, uh, with B. Arthur, there was a secondary character. I always thought about her being, or people in those roles being in the Bush Leagues. Uh, and Esther Rowe as, as the character of Florida. And uh, and clearly this uh, member of the Bush Leagues needed to be in the majors. And so we, uh, thinking that she might be the center of a television show, we had on the uh, on Maud, uh, her husband pick her up one night in the person of John Amos so that the audience could see the, a couple. And the, before the show was off the air, I think, playing in New York three hours earlier, CBS in New York was on the phone with me saying, you know, <laughs> uh, there could be a show in those two people, uh, Florida and John Evans. And so uh, that's kind of the way it did. We, we, of course, knew that's what we wanted to do. So bringing on a couple of kids, we had a family and good times.
Excellent. Norman Lear, we want to thank you for just a couple of minutes, and we encourage everybody to check out just another version of you. It's going to be on PBS October 25th and features George Clooney, John Stewart, Amy Poehler, Mel Brooks, Lena Dunham, wow. Paul and Rob Reiner, you name it, they're in it. Norman, thanks a whole lot for coming out with us. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Okay, take care. Bye. Bye. Norman Lear agreed with me, that by the way. That was Norman Lear. Agreed. We just talked to Norman Lear. Yeah, he was agreeing with me. I should ask him for I should hit him up for a job. He probably should. Have. <laughs> he was talking to you and agreeing with you. My you mother's going to say that. Why didn't you ask Norman Lee for a job? <laughs> I don't understand. You have all these connections. Why don't you ask him for a job? Well, just, I don't know about Norman Lear. <laughs> you agree? I mean, you're I can't a make that. I can't make that stuff no, up. That's can't. what. That's what she's going to say. I, <laughs> don't make fun of me. That's a real thing. You should have asked him for a job. It's uh, <laughs> it's eight twenty two.